Todd Sterling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Glenn Hall Taylor's tale of murder and futile escape. Escape to nowhere. Starring Jackie Cooper. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of... The Zero Hour. and riverboat lights glow eerily through the pall of fog which clings to the earth and the water. A coal barge made fast to a pier rises and falls as though breathing. Aboard in the cabin, a bedridden old lady converses with her son. You don't fuss over me. You got work to do, Carl. Uh, everything's taken care of, Ma. You looked at the bridles. Oh, I forgot. Oh, thought it was time for the tug to arrive. Go look at the bridles. Okay. Some bad fog outside. Take a light. Okay. Hey, who are you? Help me. A girl. What are you doing here? I need help. I'm in trouble. Police? No. Uh, look, I'll, I'll explain later, but now, please, please, hide me. You'll save my life. Well, uh, well, okay. Here, get under that canvas. My name is Dominic Stark. I work for the FBI, special agent. I get involved in the damnedest things. Never know from one day to the next whether to pack hunting boots and a shotgun or a wetsuit and a CO2 gun. On this particular night at the field office, I went over to Pete Belden's desk and was about to make a little small talk with him. Do me a favor, uh, will you, Nick? If you're not up to your neck in something, would you be a pal and take my phone calls for 15, 20 minutes? i got to get me a sandwich and a cup of coffee or I'll pass out. Sure, sure. Only don't stay too long. No, I won't. I'll order him to go and bring him back to my desk. Here we go. Stark here. Where? Clayton? Natalie Morris. Amazon Mary? We'll get on it. Pete will be right back. He's grabbing a sandwich. Gotcha. So long. Now, you just be kind of quiet until I see if Ma's asleep yet. Okay. That you, Carl? Well, sure, Ma. Who'd you think it was? Well, I thought I heard you talking to someone. Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Natalie, Ma. Morrison. Natalie Morrison. Uh, Natalie, that's that's my mother, Mrs. Hodgos. What is she doing here? My stepfather, he was beating me. I was running from him. I saw your barge and, and jumped onto it from the pier. In America, it is against the law for one person to beat another person. Why did you not call the police? Oh, if I'd stopped to call them, he'd have caught me. We gotta help her, Ma. How do we help? I do not mix in family quarrels. Well, just let her ride with us to Whitestone. She can sleep in here, use my bunk. Oh, no, you mustn't put yourself out well, I'll roll up in a tarp out on deck. In that fog? Well, I, I like fog when it's not too cold. Uh, what do you say, Ma? Well, she is on board. She can stay on board. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hodge. thank you. Ma, I'm going back out and check the lights. Do you want to turn in now, Natalie? Well, I'm not really sleepy. Too keyed up, I guess. May I go out on deck with you? Well, sure. Uh, okay, Ma? If you want to keep her on board, you can let her go outside with you on board. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Natalie. Thank you. Carl! Yeah, Ma? Did you see this man who was chasing her? Well, no, why? I was just wondering. Good night, Carl. <laughs> Pete Belden brought his sandwich and coffee back to his desk. I immediately filled him in on the phone call. Oh, I'm not surprised somebody escaped from there. That woman's prison up in Clayton is a cracker box. Must be. 
Somehow she managed to slip by the matron and guards, stole a car outside the prison, and drove it over the state line. That's why it's a fed case. Incidentally, we have to drive to Madison in the morning. What else is there on it? Well, it's all in that teletype report that came in right after the phone call. Mm. Name's Natalie Morris. Any lead on her? A motorcycle cop found the car she used abandoned in the woods down near the river. Uh Oh, boy. She had quite a pattern. Mm. Get a job as social secretary, save an employer for about three months, steal what she could and split. The personal background's interesting, too. Mm. College degree, considered herself above the other inmates. And get this. Two weeks before the break, she tried to stab one of them. Nice girl. The kind you'd like to take home to mother. Yeah. After the stabbing, she underwent examination by the prison psychiatrist. He reported she was not only extremely neurotic, but has definite homicidal tendencies. Yeah. Well, I guess she's liable to kill anyone who gets in her way. She's almost as sense to kill somebody if she's not picked up soon. When she made the break, she managed to commandeer a gun. Yes. Oh, you still awake, Mrs. Sajos? Yes, I am awake. I'm glad you came. I want to talk to you. Oh, about what? When you were out on the deck with Carl tonight, a man on the radio told about a girl. Yes? The man said she wore a brown coat, like the one you wear. Also a brown hat. Your hat is brown. This girl the man told of, she is running away from the police. They chase her because she has escaped from prison. But I told you I was running away from my stepfather. What you have told us was a lie. Carl! Carl, come in here. Keep quiet, Mrs. Ajos. I'm not that girl. Besides, there's nothing you can do now. We're not tied up at the pier anymore. The tug is already pulling us. I want Carl in here. Carl! Carl! You will not call, Mrs. Ajos. Because if he comes in here and believes you, I'll use this gun on him and you. We got her to Madison next morning and the local police gave us a couple of desks to work at. Before we sat down at them, however, we'd done some other things like checking out with a fine-tooth comb the woods where the girl had abandoned her car. I found some heel prints, female variety. The local police identified them as being made by the type of shoes furnished the inmates at Clayton. I'd been checking off these items with Pete. Anyone come up with any leads at the pier? None. While you were working with the local boys, I questioned everyone I could find who'd been on or near the pier last night, but nobody recalled having seen a woman. Could she have had a uh, rendezvous with someone? I doubt it. Her pattern has always been that of a loner. Mm. Special Agent Belden. Sure, just a second. For you, Nick. Thanks. Stark speaking. Yeah? Yes? Good. That would have been about the right time, too. Uh Uh-huh. Where was that? I see. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Now we're getting someplace. Oh, where is it? A man from the local towing company. He said one of his tugs pulled a string of coal barges out of that pier the girl was traced to. It was just about the time we figured she must have reached the river. Where are they headed? Down river to Whitestone. They're due there late tonight. She might very well be hiding out in one of them. Better line up a couple of seats on a flight to Whitestone. We want to be there to welcome her. Fog slowed us down some. You want anything, Ma? No, Carl. What about you, Natalie? I'm doing fine, thank you. You ain't been out on deck this morning. How about some fresh air? I think I'll stay here for now and keep your mother company. Anybody else want coffee? No, thanks. When do we get to Whitestone? Oh, late tonight. Well, I've got some work to do. You uh, call me if you want anything. I must compliment you, Mrs. Hodgos. You're being very cooperative. I do what I do for Carl. I know that. You're a good mother, Mrs. Hodgos. A protective one. And in protecting your son, you're protecting yourself. Continue to do so, and you both may survive. 
We got to Madison ahead of the tug and coal barges. Our first idea was to hire a helicopter, but the fog was lying too low to get beneath it. However, the local sheriff's river patrol division furnished us with a launch, and a skipper who knew the banks and shallows like the back of his hand. The sheriff had also alerted all the police departments between Madison and Whitestone. This fog is no help for our side. Sure it isn't. Also, the river gets kind of narrow in spots, according to the skipper. And there are places she might jump for it, especially if she's a good swimmer. What's the name of the tug we're looking for? The Maggie Jones. The skipper knows. You think we'll have much trouble locating her in the fog? No, he says that regardless, we'll be able to pick up their running lights. Lights ahead! Where? Port side! Head for them! Hey, over there. Those look like barges to me. And there's a tug up ahead. Okay, Skipper, let's move in on the tug. Natalie, uh, a launch has pulled up alongside the tug. No. Do you, you suppose your stepfather figured out where you are and hired a launch to chase you? No, son. Well, you don't know, Ma. He might. No, Carl. But if her stepfather... Carl, I appreciate your loyalty, but I have no stepfather. What? The police are looking for me. What are you doing with that gun? Nothing yet. She escaped from prison, Carl. Her name's Morris, not Morrison. I heard it on the radio. It's true. Now then, I want you to go out on deck. I'll stay here with your mother. If those men come aboard, you convince them I'm not here. And if anything goes wrong, you're minus a mother. Okay. But if anything happens to my mother, gun or no gun... Get I... out there, damn it, and hurry! We told the tug owner what our mission was, then checked the first barge in the string. There was no one on it except the owner and an old crony of his. We got back in the launch, pulled alongside the second barge, tossed a line aboard, and hove to. And the owner helped Pete and me clamber aboard. I was never good at things nautical. However, in the infantry, I was good at crawling under barbed wire. I'm a little surprised I made it, too. Thank you, Mr. Hodges, for pulling me up so efficiently. You know my name? I got it from the skipper of the tug. I'm from the FBI, Special Agent Dominic Stark. Here are my credentials. This is Special Agent Peter Belden. We're looking for a young girl. Uh, on these barges? We're pretty sure she jumped aboard before the string left Madison last night. Well, me and my mother are the only ones on this barge. How about the other barges in the string? Do you know their owners? They're all my friends. You see any strangers, especially a girl on those barges? No, sir. And a girl couldn't be on this barge without my knowing it. Mind if we look around? No, not at all. Come on, I'll show you. What's under the canvas? Coal. Here, take a look. Nothing else. Nothing over here, Nick. Well, looks like a dead end. We'll get back in the launch and check out the other barges. Sorry I couldn't be of more help, gentlemen. They've gone? Yeah, they've gone. You all right, Ma? Yes, Carl, I'm all right. What did you tell them? I told them there was nobody on this barge except me and Ma. They looked under the tarps and into the tool locker, but of course there wasn't anything to see but coal and tools. That's fine. How close are we to Whitestone, Carl? Thirty, forty minutes. What happens to the barge when we get there? We tie up to the dock and unload. Do other people come aboard? Yes, quite a few. That would complicate my getting ashore, wouldn't it? We'll give you a chance to signal somebody or pull some other trick on me. It just might make things simpler if I used this gun and wasted you and your mother right now. Well, how would that make things simpler? Well, for example, if the bodies of you and your mother were stretched out on the canvas at one end of the barge, and I stayed in the cabin at the other end, 
They'd be so interested in the bodies that they wouldn't pay any attention to the cabin, at least for long enough that I could get ashore. But you wouldn't shoot us in cold blood just like that. He is wrong in the head, Carl. People who are wrong in the head will kill. I'm not crazy, Mrs. Hodgos. I have full possession of my faculties. I know exactly what I have to do, and when I make up my mind, I do it. And my mind is now made up. Carl, stand over there by your mother's bed. No. I can shoot you where you stand, you know. I thought I was being considerate letting you die at your mother's side. Stop it! I'll get it, Nick. There it is. Thanks. Get the cuffs on it. Right. Oh, my God, am I glad you came back. Carl... Who are these men? They're the FBI, Ma. The FBI? Oh, FBI. Oh, no, I know. When sometimes we listen to the radio show, they are what you call the good guys, eh? No? Not good guys, no, Ma. Good guys, yes. Come on, Miss Morris. I think we can find a prison that'll have locks you can't pick. was that I went back for a final check with the skipper of the tug. From him, I learned that old Mrs. Hodgins was bedridden and that she used no cosmetics. The instant he told me, I remembered that when I'd lifted a corner of that canvas, I'd seen a coffee mug with lipstick on it. You might say that Carl Hodgins and his mother were saved by a lucky coffee break. <laughs> I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes, exercise your imagination, and join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. Escape to Nowhere was adapted for radio by Glenn Hall Taylor. Jackie Cooper was heard as Dominic Stark, FBI. Featured in the cast were Carl Swenson, Lorraine Tuttle, Alan Bergman, and Ann Whitfield. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Colas, directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood for the Mutual Broadcasting System by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System.